Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Neil Gorsuch is the Supreme Court nominee by President Trump. He's a rock solid conservative, but what does he actually believe? Tom Hoefling investigates whether his mentor, Justice Scalia, really believed in the personhood of the unborn. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. President Trump has nominated his first judicial nominee to the Supreme Court of the United States, S-C-O-T-U-S, SCOTUS, and that person is 10th Circuit Judge Neil Gorsuch, a Colorado native who happened to be a fishing buddy of the now deceased late Justice Antonin Scalia, who left and vacated that seat, leaving an empty seat at the United States Supreme Court. Now, Neil Gorsuch may actually be more conservative than Scalia on issues like deregulation, but what does he actually believe about life and abortion? What does he believe about religious freedom? What does he believe about homosexual rights and various and sundry issues that may be and probably will come before his court if he is confirmed and elected to the bench. Well, we're gonna go through some of his beliefs here. For example, this is a quote from the LA Times that says on life, LA Times reports that shortly before he became a judge, Neil Gorsuch wrote a book for Princeton University Press entitled, The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia, which reviewed the history and legal arguments for and against permitting people to have help in ending their lives. Gorsuch, after writing that book, concluded arguing for, quote, retaining the laws banning assisted suicide and euthanasia, based on the idea that all human beings are intrinsically valuable and the intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong, end quote. By the way, The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia, his book, provides one of the most thorough overviews of the ethical and legal landscape on the issue raised by assisted suicide and euthanasia, as well as the most comprehensive argument against their legalization ever published. So he's against death, in other words, yes, he's pro-life on that issue. Here's some other thoughts on natural law. You know, the idea that laws don't come from people, they come from God and the creator of nature. We can study nature and come up with laws through a philosophical and scientific process. And here's a quote from the Washington Post that after studying at Columbia University and Harvard Law School, Gorsuch earned a doctorate from Oxford University where he was supervised in his education by John Finnis, an internationally acclaimed philosopher, <laughs> philosopher of law. Here's a guy with a PhD in philosophy, right? Uh, a philosopher of law and theory of natural law and natural rights from God. So in other words, Gorsuch does believe in God, does believe in natural law, and does believe that our laws come from God. That's a good sign. A lot of liberals don't believe that, do they? What about on regulations? Well, SCOTUS blog reports that it seems quite clear. And here's a direct quote. Number one, Gorsuch's views on administrative law are meaningfully different from Scalia's in a way that could be described as even more conservative. The difference is not as profound as one might think. Unlike Scalia, Gorsuch basically does not or does want to apply the basic Gorsuch Scalia take on ordinary statutes to administrative statutes as well, end quote. 
So does that mean he's going to rule in favor of bigger government regulations or less government unless it's actually passed by the Congress? He may or may not give favor to actual statutes instead of pretend statutes that are passed by bureaucrats. How about on religious freedom? SCOTUS blog also reports that some of the most high profile cases in which Gorsuch has cast a vote have involved the religion clauses of the Constitution. Those prohibiting the establishment of religion and creating a free speech right or a free exercise of religion right, as well as congressional statutes expanding protection for religious adherence, known as the Religious Freedom Restoration Act and RLUIPA, I think it's uh, Religious Liberty of Uniformed and Institutionalized Persons Act. Followers of the Supreme Court will recognize two recent cases in which Gorsuch not only participated on the 10th Circuit, but issued rulings in favor of Hobby Lobby, the Christian owners of that store versus Sibelius, who was President Obama's HHS director, big lawsuit there over religious freedom and also Little Sisters of the Poor had to sue against the Obama administration in Little Sisters versus Burwell. Both of those cases, Gorsuch ruled with the Christians and against President Obama's big government enforcement of an abortion mandate under Obamacare. In the Hobby Lobby case, Gorsuch wrote a concurrence in the on-bank 10th Circuit Review that sided with the Hobby Lobby Company and its Christian owners. He stressed the need to accept these parties' own conceptions, their own religious views regarding the re requirements of their faith, and he held, among other things, that they were likely to prevail on claims that the contraception mandate in the Affordable Care Act substantially burdened their religious exercise in violation of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. In other words, the government can't force Christians to pay for abortion pills. That's what Gorsuch ruled and we have a religious free right to opt out of that. Thank God he got it right on that case. This position was largely vindicated in a subsequent decision by the US Supreme Court. And thereafter, in a different case, the Little Sisters of the Poor, Gorsuch joined a group of 10th Circuit judges who dissented from denying a rehearing on bank when a panel of the Court of Appeals ruled against the Little Sisters on their RIFR claims about the same ACA mandate. So Judge Gorsuch defended the Catholic nuns when they were ordered by other judges to pay for those abortion pills for your employees, even if that violates your religion. And Gorsuch came to their defense and got it right. That's the news. Thanks to SCOTUS blog and LA Times and uh, various sources there, you know, this is kind of exciting to dig into his actual views, Washington Post, uh, his actual education, having been trained classically in philosophy and in natural law, having ruled and having been a former, I believe, uh, Deputy Attorney General of the United States working in the Department of Justice and enforcing laws as they are written on the books. And he is what many view and without endorsing or opposing him, I, I just wanna observe that many people view Gorsuch as somebody like Justice Antonin Scalia. Many people say that he is a strict constructionist, that he is an originalist, that when he rules on the Constitution, he's gonna rule the way that it was originally written and what it was meant to mean by the founding fathers who wrote it. And not by liberal reinterpreters who make up a new Constitution anytime they don't like the old one. No, he's not like that. And thank God, I think 70% of Americans supported Trump because, or said that if they voted for Trump, it was because of that reason. That they wanted a Supreme Court justice who would be a constructionist or originalist who would defend the Constitution, defend our Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms, defend the right to life. And thank God, now I will uh, tip my hand a little bit to say thank you, Judge Gorsuch, for your service to our country. Thank you for being willing to step into the fray. I know this is a great 
honor to be nominated, but you're not doing it for the money. You're not doing it to avoid publicity because God knows you've just stepped into the biggest publicity mill in the world. And that's gonna be the Senate confirmation to become a Supreme Court justice. God bless you, sir, for going through that and for taking conservative stands on the issues that we've been able to learn about. God bless you in Jesus' name. In fact, we're gonna pray for him right now. The Bible says this in 2 Chronicles 19, God set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we remember there was a time in the Old Testament where the people of Israel were ruled by judges. There's an entire book, the book of Judges. Father, we pray that as America is at times, hopefully not ruled by, but at least governed in some way by judicial review. Father, we pray that the people who are appointed judges in our land, especially chosen by President Trump, not just for Supreme Court, but for appeals courts and federal judgeships throughout the country, that every one of those people will be vetted and selected according to their morality according to their righteousness, that if they will rule righteously, then they will be confirmed by the Senate. And if they are not, then they will not. Father, give our senators wisdom to select and deselect. Father, give your people here in America the liberty and freedom to be ruled and governed by godly men and women who honor Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now. That was a long first segment, but I, I'm gonna set this up by saying, when we come back, we're gonna have a review of the history and career and beliefs of Antonin Scalia. Is Gorsuch really like Scalia? Well, Trump says he is, and maybe that's not good enough. Scalia was not Jesus Christ. And we're gonna have an analysis here by Tom Hofling, who's gonna explain what Scalia actually believed about the pro-life issue as it pertains to personhood right after this break. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four-part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Justice Scalia, great judge, died recently and we have a vacancy. I am looking to appoint judges very much in the mold of Justice Scalia. We lost a great justice in Scalia, great guy. 
And we have to replace Judge Scalia with justices of the Supreme Court like him. I like to say over there at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, we're in the promise keeping business. <laughs> President Donald Trump will announce a Supreme Court nominee who will uphold the God-given liberties enshrined in our Constitution in the tradition of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia. Of the late, great Justice Antonin Scalia, whose image and genius was in my mind throughout the decision-making process. They say that the Equal Protection Clause requires that you treat a, a helpless human being that's still uh, in the womb uh, uh, the way you treat uh, other human beings. I think when the Constitution says that persons are entitled to equal protection of the laws, I think it uh, clearly means walking around persons. Walking around persons. Should abortion be illegal in your eyes? Should it be illegal? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't have public views on what should be illegal and what shouldn't. Regardless of whether you think prohibiting abortion is good or whether you think prohibiting abortion is bad, regardless of how you come out on that, mm -hmm. my only point is the Constitution does not say anything about it. The Constitution does not say anything about it. They say that the Equal Protection Clause requires that you treat a, a helpless human being that's still uh, in the womb uh, uh, the way you treat uh, other human beings. The Constitution does not say anything about it. It leaves it up to democratic choice. The point is, who should decide? Should it be a question uh, on abortion, whether people try to persuade each other that there ought to be, or there oughtn't to be, and, and put it to a vote? That's fine. You know, if you want the right to abortion, create it the way most rights are created. In a, in a democracy, you persuade your fellow citizens, pass a law. Does natural law have a place in interpreting the Constitution? No. Folks, I don't know about you, but I'm appalled by what uh, I heard Justice Scalia say in, in, in this videotape. Let me quote uh, William Blackstone, who was, whose work was quoted by the framers of our Constitution more than any other source except the Bible. Uh, he said this, he said, this is what is called the law of nature, which being dictated by God himself is of course superior in obligation to any other. It is binding in all the globe, in all countries, at all times. No human laws are of any validity if contrary to this, and such of them as are valid derive all their authority from this original. Uh, Alexander Hamilton, who was one of the key figures that helped uh, ratify our Constitution, said this. He said, when human laws contradict or discountenance the means which are necessary to preserve the essential rights of any society, they defeat proper end of all laws and so become null and void. Uh, back at the end of World War II, uh, 
at the Nuremberg trials, the United States sent uh, Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson. And this is what he said in the case Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett. He said, the very purpose of a Bill of Rights was to withdraw certain subjects from the vicissitudes of political controversy, to place them beyond the reach of majorities and officials, and to establish them as legal principles to be applied by the courts. One's right to life and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. You want a right to abortion? Persuade your fellow citizens it's a good idea and pass a law. You got the right to abortion. And that's what democracy is all about. Do you agree with him that our most important rights should be subject to a democratic vote or to the vote of a legislative body? Do you agree with him that, as he said, helpless human beings uh, are not protected by our Constitution? That you have to be a walking around person, as, as Scalia said? When the Constitution says that persons are entitled to equal protection of the laws, I think it uh, clearly means walking around persons walking around persons. I've read my Constitution many times. I've never seen the phrase walking around persons. It simply says persons. No person shall be deprived of life without due process of law. Uh, the 14th Amendment absolutely requires each and every state in the Union to provide equal protection for the right to life of every innocent person within their jurisdiction. It's not walking around persons, it's persons. If we want to have any hope of restoring this country, if we want to have any hope of uh, stopping this bloody holocaust that has now taken more than 60 million innocent lives, we have to get back to the plumb line of principle that America was founded on. We have to get back to the principles of the Declaration that all men are created equal, endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, starting with the right to life. We have to get back to the stated purposes of our Constitution. We have to set in our mind that we will, in this generation, find a way to secure the blessings of liberty to our posterity. We have to restore justice. We cannot follow the lead of Justice Scalia if we hope to do any of those things. We cannot continue to uh, roll out judges in the image of Antonin Scalia. This is PIJN News. By now you're enjoying our daily news program, PIJN News, and where else are you gonna see a TV news anchor stop and pray with his audience after every story? We are unique, and we're changing the world in three ways. Number one, we're bringing you daily news from a Christian perspective, news making interviews. Number two, we are mobilizing thousands of people to pray to God to join us and change world history as it unfolds. And number three, we are sending thousands of petitions to Congress. I know you wanna partner with us and we have a new method to do that. It's by donating your loose change on a daily basis. Well. If you're like me, most people actually don't carry many coins in their pocket because we're an electronic society. We're donating uh, through credit cards or debit cards. We're making daily purchases and we don't have coins. So how can you donate your loose change? Well, we have an easy system where we've partnered with His Kingdom Funding for a secure automatic donation to round up every purchase that you make to the nearest dollar. Well, what do I mean by that? Let's say you go and you buy a cup of coffee and a, a bagel and the, the purchase is $5.75. And you swipe your credit card. 
Well, because you've signed up your card with our system, it'll be rounded up to $6, and that 25 cent difference will be donated to our ministry automatically. And you don't even have to think about it. You're rounding up to the next dollar, you're donating your spare change to us on a, on a regular basis, and you're changing the world with PIJN News. Visit our website right now, pijnnews.com, and click on the loose change icon. And it'll take you through a sign-up process, it's very easy, and at the end of the year, you will get a tax-deductible receipt of your entire giving for the year. Please, visit pijnnews.com and partner with us to change the world. God bless you in Jesus' name. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. I want to say a personal word of thanks to Tom Hofling for putting together that montage analogy of Justice Scalia. This just goes to show that even in Republican politics, none of us are Jesus Christ. I am certainly not perfect in all of my ideology and all of my beliefs. And yet I long to agree with God. I long to agree with the Bible. And I think Justice Scalia probably did that in his Catholic faith. I hope that Judge Gorsuch does that in his Episcopal faith. Because ultimately God is the judge and he's the one who defines life. He is the one who created us in the image of God. And I pray that Judge Gorsuch is in fact pro-life, that he lives up to his principles, that he may even defend the personhood of the unborn beginning at conception without exception because that right to life comes from God and not even from the Constitution or from men. Please donate when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. We need your contributions to bring you these programs to stay on the air. Please call us if you want prayer. 866-Obey-God. That's our prayer line, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21, he covets greedily all day long, the fool covets, but the righteous gives and does not spare. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-ObeyGod. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 